Well, the new DuckTales series just came out and I wanted to talk a little bit about it. I'm gonna be talking about a lot of stuff here, but if you just want my basic impression of what I thought of the show, I thought it was pretty decent. It had some issues. I do recommend watching it and I will be watching future episodes after seeing the first one. But first I wanna go over some overall history about the Duck universe and then we'll get to some of my issues that I had with it. My first exposure to the Duck universe was the early Disney shorts. They used to show them on the Disney Channel in the early 80s on a show called Good Morning Mickey. It was a compilation of Mickey, Donald, and Goofy shorts from the 1940s and the 50s. That was my first impression of Donald Duck, that angry, quacking duck that throws temper tantrums. For people that don't know much about the Duck comics or DuckTales, what you need to understand is that that Donald is basically a different variation of Donald Duck. If you like the temper tantrum Donald, I suggest reading The Sundays by Al Taliaferro. Those stay more true to the animation Donald, and they're great comics in their own right. One of the main writers for those early Donald animated shorts was my favorite artist, Carl Barks. He also happens to be the creator of Scrooge McDuck, and the reason why DuckTales even exists. He came up with the plots and the storyboards for those early cartoon shorts, but years later, when he was hired to make the Donald Duck comics, he had to change the formula. Seeing a duck throw a temper tantrum on screen in a moving animation was funny, but that didn't really support itself for an entire 32-page comic book story. Because of that, Barks was forced to change the character, and in turn created an entirely different Donald. And at the same time, some of the most classic and beloved comic book characters ever. While Carl Barks didn't actually create Donald or the nephews, he did create what made those characters relevant. You might be asking yourself, so what even really makes these duck comics so great, Mike? Well, the best way I can explain it is that they are witty commentaries on life itself. Barks showcased the best and worst elements of human behavior through the use of satire. The lessons and words of wisdom are always implied, but he never ever beats you over the head with it. Another thing to understand for people that are just starting out is that the original comics were not called DuckTales. There used to be a publishing company called Dell, and Dell's most notable title was the Four Color Comics. Those were an anthology comic series where you'd get several stories featuring different characters each month. Basically, if the comic sold enough copies, that character got his own comic book. The first Donald Duck story appeared in Four Color 9, Donald Duck Finds Pirate Gold from 1942. After that, a handful of these Donald Four Colors got released, and eventually Donald got his very own comic title. At the same time, another popular comic series was going on called Walt Disney Comics and Stories. There were comics even earlier than that featuring Donald, like in Mickey Mouse Weekly, but Walt Disney Comics and Stories is what's important here because that's what Carl Barks was working on. In this era, other artists were making comics featuring Donald, but when Barks began drawing for this series in 1943, the stories skyrocketed in quality. For most of his career, nobody had any clue who drew any of the Duck comics. It just said on the cover, Walt Disney. But the fans started referring to his stories as the ones by the good artist. People could tell the difference between the artists who were just hashing out the funny animal strips for a paycheck and Barks' work, which was masterful. Eventually, Bark started writing stories featuring Donald's rich uncle, Scrooge McDuck. The first being Christmas on Bear Mountain. Scrooge began as just a mean old man, and yes, Bark's named Scrooge after Scrooge from A Christmas Carol. Eventually, Scrooge even got to have his own four-color issue, Only a Poor Old Man, where we actually learned a bit of history about how he made his fortune, and some of his most famous quotes even came from this issue. Scrooge ended up getting his own comic book series after only three four-color issues were released. That just goes to show how popular of a character he was, while Donald had about 22 four-colors before he branched out onto his own. The Uncle Scrooge series is great, but I actually prefer the Walt Disney comics and stories over it. Most of the stories about Scrooge are adventure stories where he goes on some kind of a quest to get more money. They're fantastic, but I find Walt Disney comics and stories a bit more relatable. I'm also a huge fan of superhero comics. I love reading old issues of Batman and Spider-Man, but I think there are limits to how much I can relate to a crime drama. With Walt Disney Comics and Stories, a lot of the 10-page stories are just simple, everyday life type of situations. There might be a story about dealing with an annoying neighbor, getting in shape, going on a date, or doing yard work. You can easily see yourself doing any of the things that they do in these stories, and then read in amazement as Donald makes a fool of himself trying some unbelievable stunt. 
I think this is where the difference between the comics and DuckTales is drastically different. I feel like when people are thinking of DuckTales, they're thinking about Scrooge diving through the money, going on adventures, and they're focusing a lot on the wealth aspect of it. I don't really care how much money is in Scrooge's bin. That's not what these stories were about. And it's one of the reasons that Barks never gave an exact figure on Scrooge's wealth. That isn't the point of the stories. They're to read, reflect on, and take a deeper look at the behavior of modern society. So originally, there were three series, Walt Disney Comics and Stories, Donald Duck, and Uncle Scrooge. They were all written and drawn by Carl Barks. Think about that for a second. He did all the writing and all the art entirely himself. Well, except for a bit of help from his wife, who did some of the inking for the lettering, to be fair. On the art side of it, everything was always top quality, and Barks would usually include a giant splash panel for the climax of the story, which was always an unbelievable piece of art. And I can't say enough about the quality of the writing. Scholars and fans have been studying it for decades. In the 50s, it was one of the most popular comics in the country, and it remains one of the most popular comics in Scandinavian countries. I even have some fan magazines which analyze the Duck universe on levels of absurdity. Things like the location of Duckburg and analyzing Donald Duck's teeth. I kid you not. People who love these comics love them like no other fandom. The only thing I can even compare it to is diehard Star Trek fans. Except with Star Trek, you have the creator, Gene Roddenberry, a team of writers, an entourage of actors, all that the fans idolize. With the Ducks, it's basically just Carl Barks. Oh, and one other guy, which I haven't mentioned yet. If you want to know what I think the best Carl Barks comics are, I did a video a few years ago listing out a lot of my favorite ones, but he stopped doing the original Duck comics in the mid-1960s. Much later, in the mid-1980s, another artist came along who was a die-hard Barks fanatic. Now, the first thing anybody ever says to me whenever I bring up the Duck comics is, Have you ever read The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck by Don Rosa? I want you to understand that, as a kid, I was subscribed to all the Duck comic publications. I remember getting the Gladstone 1 series, Son of the Sun, in the mail, and loving it. I've read every single Carl Barks comic many times over, and I've read the majority of Don Rosa's work. The best way I can sum up his work is that it's probably the best fan fiction ever made. I absolutely love his work, but to me, it's like an alternate world. Sort of like watching the J.J. Abrams Star Trek. It's good, it's just a different reality. As awesome fan fiction, I thoroughly enjoy Don Rose's work. He continued the work that Barks began. I think my favorite story that he ever did was His Majesty McDuck. In that one, Scrooge essentially has to go to war with the Beagle Boys when the land that the money bin stands on becomes its own nation. Yeah, I could go on forever about the comics, so I'll just sum up by saying, start by reading the original comics by Carl Barks. For a long, long time, they were hard to come by in unedited form, and they were expensive. As a kid, I had to spend every dime I had to get my hands on the blue, hardbound, another rainbow slipcase sets, which were hundreds of dollars, but the best thing available at that time. These days, we're all lucky enough that Fanographics is reprinting fully unedited volumes of the original Bark stories. I can't recommend them enough. They're affordable, nicely put together editions, and they're in color. That's a big deal to me for a few reasons. First, the Another Rainbow books were in black and white, and second, I know Barks himself was unhappy with the color that they used in the original Dell and Gold Key comics. That old four-color process left a lot to be desired. I personally prefer it because that's what I grew up with and I'm used to it, but it should really be presented in a way that the artist intended, and now you can get that. Though I am going to nitpick a little bit here, and I'm going to say that some of the color done for the early Gladstone comics were done better. I own some of the original color charts for those, and they're just way better quality coloring. If you want the best color duck comics that you're ever going to see, go for the Uncle Scrooge Adventures in color books. My only problem with those, they edited stuff out sometimes. But anyway, where am I here? Oh yeah, DuckTales. It was one of the best cartoons of the 1980s. Um, the animation, the voice acting, it was awesome. It was truly one of the better animated cartoons of that entire era. Anyway, even though the show was great and it did do a lot to bring the ducks into the popular culture, there were several glaring issues. Some of the new additional characters created for the show poisoned the well. Characters like Bubba, Webby, and the genie from the movie turned one of the smartest series of all time into Saturday morning hogwash. I'm not at all against the addition of new characters, but these ones were just dumb and annoying. Instead of Bubba, they should have focused more on Gyro. Sure, he was in the show, but rarely. 
Instead of Webby, they could have featured Daisy more and her relationship with Donald and the nephews. And instead of the genie, the movie should have included Donald. After all, this was Scrooge's big feature film adventure. You would think his partner in every adventure he ever went on in the comics would have been there alongside of him. So that finally brings me to the new 2017 DuckTales series. And that point right there is the main element I can say that this show is doing correctly. The main characters in the Duck universe were always Scrooge, the nephews, and Donald Duck. The 1980s DuckTales dropped the ball by almost always excluding Donald in favor of lesser creations. I've always liked DuckTales, but the source material was so much stronger than the cartoon that it always left me with an empty feeling. I wanted the show to live up to the comics, and even though it was really well done, it never got to the level that the comics did. This new show has the opportunity to fix that, and after watching the first episode, I'm left with a lot of mixed emotions. The show seems to be a lot more aware of the comic history, which is good, and it pays a lot of tribute to the comics and to Barks, which is very nice to see. The entire opening of the show is inspired by the paintings that Carl Barks did in his later life, and those paintings are all based on the comics that he drew, so the opening is a great tribute. And something more minor, but Scrooge is wearing red this time around, which he should be. In the 80s cartoon, he had on blue, and that always bugged me. Scrooge wears red. End of story. At least the NES game got it right. In the first episode of the new show, the ducks go to Atlantis, which I have to assume is partially based off of Uncle Scrooge number 5, The Secret of Atlantis, though it does go in its own direction. I'd like to see more episodes based around events from the comics. The 80s cartoon did comic adaptations on occasion. The episode Earthquack was originally Land Beneath the Ground from Uncle Scrooge 13. Microducks from Outer Space was adapted from Uncle Scrooge 65 and The Land of Tralala was from Uncle Scrooge number 6. Sometimes these stuck pretty close to the comics, and other times they didn't. To this day, I've never seen an adaptation of one of the original comics that accurately captured the spirit with the right tone. Now they have the opportunity to do that, but some key things like the art direction are so different, I'm not sure it's going to be possible. The new show got most of the history and the lore of the characters correct, and I really like that they tried to establish Donald as a heroic character again, but still retain that sense of comedy about him. That was well done. I like that Scrooge has to deal with the feeling of not being important anymore, getting upset when the kids say he used to be a big deal. That definitely feels like a core Scrooge characteristic, for him to hear that and then prove to them and the world what he's all about. That was great. Now they just need to retain this same thought process throughout the series and keep the show about Scrooge, Donald, and the nephews, and hopefully limit the addition of things like Gizmo Duck. Superheroes really don't have a place in this universe. And I don't want to hear about the one time that Donald drank that potion and became the Super Snooper. That wasn't about him being a superhero, it was about him being an idiot and doing something that he shouldn't have. I honestly always felt that Gizmo Duck was the stake that went through the heart of the original show and killed it. Again, Keep the show about Scrooge. One thing that definitely bothered me a lot was that they drew the characters so off-model. Why the ducks have square heads is beyond me. I guess it's a stylistic choice, or they're trying to modernize it or something, but I would have preferred the traditional drawing style. The artists who drew the show are probably all amazing, competent artists, but drawing the ducks in this way just makes it feel like they don't know how to draw the ducks properly. Honestly, I can live with it because I'm more there for the story, but I find it unfortunate. And this is where the 80s cartoon shines over this one, because they did it in more of a traditional style, as it should have been. Another thing that kind of bothers me is the voice acting. Some of the characters have better voices in the new show, like Webby, while other characters, like the nephews, the voices are a lot worse. Scrooge's voice is pretty good, but I need to get used to it since I'm always going to have that Alan Young iconic voice in my mind. It really makes me have a deeper appreciation for the original DuckTales voice actors. Another problem I have is how dumb they made the nephews in this. By the end, they do figure out the puzzle of Atlantis, which is good, but in a good portion of the episode, they act like fools. It's left up to Webby to teach them the family history. In the comics, the nephews were smart kids. They would always find a way to help defeat the Ducks' enemies and be helpful. In this show, their knowledge and helpfulness is largely upstaged by Webby and Mrs. Beakley. This makes the nephews' characters less important than they should be. Also, their attitudes are completely obnoxious. In the comics, and even in the original DuckTales, the kids were polite. 
the Duck Universe version of a Boy Scout. They really shouldn't be behaving the way they have them acting here. With all my gripes, you might be wondering, how can I even recommend this show? Well, they did get a lot of the aspects right, even if some elements aren't perfect. And I'll always recommend anything that's going to popularize the Ducks and add more potential for people to go back and read the original source material. Overall though, I think the show had a pretty decent start, and it does have a ton of potential. Now I understand the show is called DuckTales, and it's gonna include elements from the cartoon, but anybody who's read the comics will understand why I'd want something more closely adapted to the comics. If they can really attempt to keep this series true to its roots, I'll be there for every episode. I'll be honest though, I would really be surprised if this show doesn't get derailed by bad management, forcing them to add in elements that shouldn't be there. And the first episode already had a few signs of it. Here's hoping that in the future, they can stay true to form. So those were my impressions of the first episode. I think you should go check it out, and I'm going to be watching for more.